the final point we made was that news organisations needed to create that social currency and make it easier for people to search and to share this information. And I think that that's a really key point that we're going to look at more next week. So that brings us to the, this model for the 21st century newsroom. Uh, this is about two years old now, but when I first blogged it a couple of years ago, um, it was kind of put up as something for people to pick apart and contribute to. Instead, everyone just seemed to say, yeah, well done, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and some it's say, not a bad thing, really. <laughs> it's not, no, but I'd, I'd like a bit more criticism, really. <laughs> <laughs> so please, please be critical about it. Um, a number of news organisations have adopted it or integrated it into their operations, including some quite major ones, which is quite frightening. Um, <laughs> And, and it's, it seems very simple and straightforward to me. It's, it's playing to the strengths of different media, and it's a kind of a story-centric model. So when you get the first um, inkling of this story, when you get the lead, you create an alert. Uh, Twitter's perfect for this, text alerts, things like that. This does a couple of things. Firstly, it puts a, a, a marker in the sand that this is your story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The great thing about Twitter for this is that Twitter is indexed regularly by Google. You know, Google very, very quickly um, stores everything that's put on Twitter. And this means that when it comes to something like Google News, you're likely to be the top result, certainly in the early stages, because you were the first. And a great example of this is the Birmingham Post did a story on Karen Brady being arrested um, from the Birmingham City Football Club. And uh, Mark Reeves, the editor, tweeted this. And because he tweeted it, it was their version of that story, the Birmingham Post version of this story was top of, of Google News for quite a while um, while that story was, was going. So that's kind of the alert. In terms of technically, that, that's its reasons. Uh, with Google News, but also socially, obviously, people are going to be retweeting it, passing it around, they're going to be coming back, so you've kind of put your mark in the sand socially as well. You're the person they heard from them first, about it first. Then you move to the draft stage, um, and this is uh, kind of blogs are classic for this, so this is where you put the, the first t one, two, three pars saying, it's a breaking story, this is what we know. Please add anything you know. And one of the key reasons for this and the alert stage is also that you're providing a platform for people to contribute, to make corrections, to contribute case studies, um, to say, yeah, I was affected by that, or I know a blog who was on that tank or whatever. Um, and, it, and you want to kind of be that first place that people find when they're Googling. Um, tank and kidnapping or whatever. Because again, it's kind of building that critical mass. If you wait until the next stage, which is the article stage, so you've written up this beautiful six-par, uh, polished, what you think is a definitive version of the article, by that stage, the competitors have got the case studies, they've had corrections on the misinformation. Um, they've also been read by ten times as many people as you have. And obviously you miss that opportunity, so that's why I think it, it's important to integrate um, publishing and distribution right from the start of the story to kind of establish that, that you're the place to come. Um, a good kind of personal example of this personal experience was when Twitter stopped doing the text alerts, uh, the free text alerts in the UK, and I set up a Facebook group about it. And because that was, there was no other Facebook group, it got, it got about 200 members within the first day. And those people were, um, were putting stuff on the uh, Facebook wall about alternative services, because all these other startups sprang up saying, we'll do, we'll do text alerts for Twitter messages. So, so that A, meant I, was, I knew about those alternative services very quickly, and B, there were people who had used those services, so I was able to say, What's your experience with that service? What's your experience? 
Uh, would you write something up for me on your experiences, kind of thing? So having that kind of platform for people to contribute very early on, mm. before you've even written up anything yourself, I think is really important. So the article kind of stage is when it moves into uh, that kind of more traditional article format or, or broadcast package. And, and it moves into print, it moves into broadcast. All of those bits are about speed. When you move on from there, it starts to move into depth. So once you've done the article, you start to look at the context. And again, this is kind of traditional um, process. So you get the you get some experts in the field to write a column about what this means for the telecom industry or live the Labour Party or whatever. Um, this is the web suits is very well in terms of links, so you can link to context very easily. It's been provided elsewhere. You can also create a portal around that issue. So you move from the individual article to a to a portal website, which is about that issue. And increasingly, news organisations are starting to do this because, again, Google loves this. One of the reasons Google loves Wikipedia is it's um, it's been around for a while. So it's gathered the, the inbound links and it becomes a kind of a definitive destination for a particular subject. So if you're searching for cervical cancer job, for example, you, if, if there's a general page that contains all of the information about that, all of the articles, links to useful stuff, then that's going to get more Google juice and, and more searches. And ultimately people are going to be searching for cervical cancer job rather than um, the, the name of a girl who's been affected, if you see what I mean. So they search for the broad subject rather than the individual characters involved. Um, and I noticed this, a couple of, when Sky relaunched their website a year or two ago, they, their top level navigation, they started to make it possible so that you could have, it would be like news, sport, entertainment, Madeleine McCann. So, it would, so those sorts of stories would be a top level navigation if it was a, a big story. Uh, so from there you go on to analysis and reflection. Um, again, print broadcasts work well, blogs work well for this, podcasts work well for this. Get a bunch of people who know what they're talking about in a room, get them talking, record it. Uh, fantastic. And then you get into real depth, interactivity. Uh, build something in Flash that allow, allows a user to specifically drill down to information relevant to them. Use a database so that you can enter in a postcode and it brings back the particular uh, relevance to that. Um, wikis allow them to contribute their own uh, knowledge of the, of the issue and so on. And forums even. Very old fashioned but still extremely popular. And then finally you've got the kind of customization level and this is where databases really come into it. So. Um, NHS Choices did an interesting thing with your risks. Um, you put in your age, you put in your gender, you put in your location, and it would tell you the leading causes of death in, in your particular areas. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite sort of feeding on people's fears, isn't it? A little bit, you know, kind of put it in go, expect to say you will die tomorrow. Kind of well, as, well, as I moved to, uh, uh, suicide was number one for me, and then <laughs> when I put in West Midlands, heart failure, you know, yeah. I <laughs> moved up to number one, so I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> um, that's a very basic example, but you could obviously put in all kinds of other factors and, and get a really much more personalised news experience. Um, particularly useful for those kind of national stories that you want to drill down to the local detail. Mm. 